My friends, thank you so very much for watching this video. We are winning the war to save pop culture from the cultural vandals that assail it, but we need your help. Please subscribe to this channel and ring the notification bell, and from time to time check to make sure you haven't been unsubscribed by YouTube without your knowledge, it happens to random subscribers every day. I have also started listing links to all my videos and live streams for free over at patreon.com slash doomcock, and you do not have to be a member to view them, they're visible to the public for free. Thanks also to all of you who liked our videos and sent us a tip by clicking the super thanks button, and as always I promise to answer each and every super thanks I receive. Thanks for watching everyone, and now, on to the video. Greetings my friends, I am Dictor Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth, broadcasting from my hidden base at the center of the Earth, and I am here today because the tireless crusader against wokeness Christopher F. Rufo, only 21 hours ago, released an astonishing video leaked from 2021 that shows Bob Iger on camera justifying and advocating for Disney inserting wokeness into their programming regardless of how it impacts the profits of Disney investors. Folks, this is a cardinal sin. It is THE sin in corporate America to knowingly adopt policies that are certain to divide the audience and diminish profits for the company and for its investors. And in this video, Iger is busted working against the interests of Disney investors. Rufo, for those of you who don't know, is the incredible muckraker journalist who first leaked the devastating Reimagine Tomorrow videos which featured footage of a woke orgy of grotesque confessions about inserting queerness into programming at every opportunity, confessions that shocked the entire world and opened the eyes of many normies to the kind of programming being inserted into the heads of their kids when they aren't looking. And I mean programming in the most Manchurian candidate way possible. Rufo has been a tireless crusader against wokeness for lo these many years, and now my friends, at a time when Peltz is gunning for Disney board seats, Elon Musk is gunning for Disney and probably Iger's job, Florida hates the mouse and Disney's movies have bombed so hard, Disney is being forced to get into the seedy world of sports gambling. Now, Rufo, at this time, chooses to put the boot in with a video straight from the horse's mouth, folks. Straight from the horse's mouth, extolling the virtues of wokeness at the expense of profit in Disney programming. Yep. There's been a bunch of debate about how much Bob Iger is a true believer in wokeness and how much he's just exploiting it as a growing market segment. Well, all doubt is now resolved. Bob Iger is busted. Bob Iger is woke. And Bob Iger, apparently, is working against the interests of the investors. I am about to play Bob Iger's comments in their entirety, folks, so you can hear what he said for yourselves and judge for yourselves. But it seems to me to be a devastating document that explains another piece of the puzzle. Iger reveals himself to be committed to DEI crap, and that's why Disney is never going to recover fiscally until ideologues like Iger are forced to stop spending investor money to promote their own extremist political views and get back to the business of making profits for investors. The video you're about to hear essentially makes Nelson Peltz's case for him, folks. This is why Disney stockholders need to vote Nelson Peltz in so he can clean house of policies like this that are antithetical to profit. Now, let's give a listen to what Iger said back in 2021. Bob has talked about this uh, eloquently um, since he's become CEO. I'll, I'll say a couple of things about it. You know. We've tended to uh, shy away from politics, uh, and in doing so, I think we've shied away from talking about issues that aren't political at all, like the issues that we're talking about today, um, because we believe in doing so, maybe it, looked like, it looks like we're taking a stand. Well, in that reality, we should be taking a stand. I take, by the way, I, t I take responsibility for this. I was CEO for 15 years. And so I, you know, I, I manage the, the company's public facing um, processes and, and um, you know, how we were portraying ourselves. And I think that 
we have to be less cautious, as Bob, I think, was just alluding to about such things and not be concerned, like just commenting about what happened in Washington last week. That's not political on our part at all. We, we know that what we saw was fundamentally wrong and that it was rooted in hatred and disrespect and contempt and intolerance. And we should feel free as a company to comment about that without retribution. And another thing I want to say that I've learned um, these last I mean, nine to 12 months is, you know, I, I'm very proud of a lot of the work we've done in terms of diversity and inclusion on screen. When we, when we did a, a Coco, for instance, at Pixar, a great example of that, or Tiana, or of course, Black Panther is one of the great examples of that. I, I, I allowed those things to make me feel a bit complacent in a sense. It's not that I, I wanted to be that way, but I thought, wow, we did Black Panther. How great are we? And it caused me to not focus as much as I should have on the culture of the company and the environment and, and, and in the voices that were telling those stories as opposed to just how they were being portrayed on the screen. Dang it, Bob. It was you all along, buddy. Shit on a stick, dude. Iger is as woke as too much coffee man on a treadmill trying to run to the toilet after an espresso enema. Why is Iger discussing current events, diversity, and inclusion at all? He's the CEO of an entertainment company, and yet the policies he's laying out have nothing to do with making shows entertaining. No, any potential for entertainment is just to lure the unwary in. Then once they're watching, the new woke order brainwashing begins. There is little doubt about it, O Skull of Calderon. Iker is caught arguing here on camera for policies that harm investors. Note, people. Iger says, quote, We've tended to shy away from politics, and in doing so, I think we've shied away from talking about issues that aren't political at all, like the issues that we're talking about today. Maybe it looks like we're taking a stand. Well, in reality, we should be taking a stand. We have to be less cautious about discussing topics that could be divisive and political, unquote. Well, there you have it, folks. There is the smoking gun. He says here, we have to be less cautious about discussing topics that could be divisive and political. Actually, Bob, it is imperative that you abstain from divisive and political positions because what do divisive stands do? They divide. They sunder. In short, when you choose to make divisive and political statements to your customer base, by definition, you are going to lose people. A certain segment of your customer base will boycott or leave the company. And for any company, adopting policies that drive business away is corporate malpractice. It is prioritizing the CEO and Disney board's political speech over investor profits, something a CEO and governing board should never do. This is sheer madness, knowing that the policies you're implementing are hurting the bottom line of your investors and still moving forward with those policies. Because what? They feel good? They feel right? They're good virtue signaling for cocktail parties in Hollywood? My God, people, do you see? Bob Iger is confessing here that the woke agenda is more important to him than profits, and thus Bob Iger in this clip is essentially saying that Doomcock was right that the Walt Disney Company is no longer a company that prioritizes profits for investors? No, my friends, from Bob Iger's own mouth, Disney is no longer a for-profit company. I wonder if Nelson Peltz is listening. I wonder if Elon Musk is watching. Perhaps members of Xanadoom should shoot this video to Elon Musk, because as I understand it, Mr. Musk is talking with Nelson Peltz about this whole Disney proxy war business, a business that is likewise illuminated by Iger's comments here. Why is Iger fighting so damn hard against Nelson Peltz? It's because Peltz is a businessman and an investor, and by God, Nelson Peltz is a for-profit enterprise, and Iger can't let him on the Disney board because then Peltz will work tirelessly until Disney is once again <laughs> a for-profit company. And at that point, the woke orgy will be over, and Disney will have to push the politics away and become horror of horrors, 
a for-profit company again. Folks, here is the smoking gun. Here is the head of a major corporation confessing on camera that Disney on his watch does not shy away from divisive messaging, even though it divides and shrinks the audience. This is a stunning confession and another feather in the cap of Christopher F. Rufo, tireless journalist and warrior against woke. Man, I'd love to do an interview with him someday, but in the meantime, this is all the proof we need at last of Bob Iger's guilt in all this mess. The only question is, Mr. Peltz, Mr. Musk, are you listening? And what are you going to do about it? From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. <laughs> Ha 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 